Hey, church family, we're here again for our devotions for the day, and we're looking at Psalm chapter 6 today, so let's get started. Psalm chapter 6, beginning in verse 1, it says, Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are shaking. My whole being is shaken with terror. And you, Lord, how long? Turn, Lord, rescue me. Save me because of your faithful love. For there is no remembrance of you in death. Who can think of you in Sheol? I am weary from my groaning. With my tears, I dampen my bed and drench, drench my couch every night. My eyes are swollen from grief. They grow old because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all evildoers, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea for help. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and shake with terror. They will turn back and suddenly be disgraced. Today we're going to talk about how crying out to the Lord is important. And how do we cry out to the Lord? We see three different ways in which David cries out to the Lord in this section. We're just going to review those together. So the first section is verses 1 through 3. Verses 1 through 3, David is crying out for mercy. See, often we find ourselves in trouble, whether we've sinned or someone has sinned against us or life and the pressures of life has just beat us down. We often find ourselves in dismay. Sometimes we react poorly to life. Sometimes we react poorly to people in our life. Sometimes we just flat out knowingly sin. Well, what happens when we do that? When we sin, we have offended a holy God. We've offended him. Now, how did Paul respond when he sinned? Well, Psalm 51, we'll eventually get there, is, an, is just a beautiful picture of repentance and how you respond. You take ownership for your sin. You turn from your sin. You, you seek to glorify God. But here what we see is he is crying out for mercy because he has sinned. Why is he crying out to mercy? Because he knows that God is just in disciplining him or bringing upon wrath upon him because of his actions. See, sin is devastating. Sin is awful. And so David understands that, look, Lord, I've sinned. I, I am I'm problematic. There is issues in my life. Have mercy on on me. What we learn from this is that we cry out for mercy from the Lord. When you sin, when you've messed up, when life is pressing you down and you're not responding the right way or you're not walking by faith, what you do is you cry out for mercy from the Lord. Because God is just to judge. We understand that. So therefore, because he is just in judging and passing judgment and giving out and disciplining and all that, he alone is the one we cry out to for mercy. That's why we cry out to the Lord for mercy, because he is the only one that can truly give mercy. Because he is the only one that is justified in judging, in passing judgment, in passing sentence, in handing out consequences for actions. So why do we cry out for mercy? Because God alone can give mercy. All right, and then the second section we see, verses 4 through 7, we see here that he cries out for salvation. David appeals to God's faithful love. While God is just, we just reviewed that in the crying out for mercy, that he is just. He can discipline. He can pass sentence. But see, he also loves us. So while God is just, he also loves and is patient. We know that love is patient, is kind, and all those things. We see this clearly displayed in the gospel. While God is just in condemning all of us to hell, because he loved us, he gave us his son so that we can be redeemed, we can be restored, that we can be forgiven, that we can be shown grace and mercy. And the source of that grace and mercy that he gives us in the gospel, his love for us. But see, just because God loves us doesn't mean he doesn't discipline us. Hebrews 12, 6 reminds us of that, that God disciplines those he loves. But in, all, in remembering all that and putting all that together, we remember this. Only God can save. Because God is the only one that can redeem you. He's the only one that can show you grace and mercy. Therefore, he is the only one that you can cry out to 
for salvation. See, David wasn't crying out for just for to just anybody for mercy and for salvation. He was crying out to the Lord. So don't turn to other things to find mercy and grace and love in life because God alone is the only one that can truly provide those things for us. So you need to cry out for mercy to God because he alone can give mercy. You cry out for salvation from the Lord because he is the only one that can give salvation. And when you do that, when you're crying out to the Lord for mercy and you're crying out to him for salvation, when you turn to the Lord for those things that only he can give, you can walk away as David did in verses 8 through 10, crying out with rejoicing. See, we can rejoice because we know that when we cry out for mercy and salvation, the Lord hears it says it here. Let's read that again in Psalm 6 in verse 9. It says, The Lord has heard my plea for help. The Lord accepts my prayer. Repentance is so vital to the life of the Christian. See, when we cry out for mercy and salvation from the Lord, when we cry out in repentance, we can know that God hears us because God will forgive. 1 John 1 9 tells us, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We can cry out rejoicing because we have been forgiven. We have been redeemed. Therefore, because you have been forgiven and redeemed, boldly cry out with rejoicing. Praise the Lord that he is the one that gives mercy and salvation to those who cry out for it. Well, it was a joy reading this with you today, and I look forward to our next psalm together. Have a great afternoon.